Hey guys, this is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with my co-host Adrian Pedrin. Uh, well, today's episode we'll discuss you know ideas that must die for us to improve our lives. Um, you know, basically we're just gonna go for it. Let's see what comes up. Um, <laughs> we have a few ideas. Come we have a f- we have we have quite a few ideas. So let's see what happens. So, what ideas should should we eliminate? <laughs> Fast food. That, I, I liked when you when you brought that up. Fast food one. Yeah, well, fast food, see, here's the thing. Fast food, for various reasons, is a very stupid idea. I, I understand when it came, when, when, when it was invented, the concept of fast food, but today in the life that we live, it's a really stupid idea for various reasons. Number one, it's, it's I, I, I mean, it's probably, I'm, I'm not sure about this, <laughs> I can get the research, but I'm pretty sure it's one of the main reasons where people are fat. <laughs> May I'm I don't know because supposedly there's also fast food in in the UK and they're not as fat as we are as Americans I mean as Americans or Mexicans whatever yeah Mexicans. They're super fat too yeah well well you know Mexico is probably like one or, number one number two in the world in yeah. in terms of obesity I yeah. think the US is not number part, one or not, number not, two yeah either number one or number two <laughs> we're always fighting I remember like about a year ago it was like yeah. Uh, Mexico, yeah, Mexico lost the battle to the U.S. Mexico lost the battle. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I was like, we can't even do this, right? right? Come why, on, guys. Why are we even competing in that? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> about a year ago, it was uh, the States was number one and Mexico was number two. Yeah. Now, now let's clear something up. Fast food in terms of the way it's, it's um, the, the food itself. Because you can make you can make fast food that's healthy, and I think that's something that's, that's coming up you, right now. Um, you know, for example, these um, on-demand food food ordering you know oh, yeah, companies they, that are they, they're popping up. They give everywhere. you like a crate for it yeah. each week with everything. Yeah, and they give work. it to you. Yeah, and that's interesting because some I've heard of some startups are really taking it very seriously to the point where they're they're even doing with data. Um, so they'll you know be more nutritious than just simply giving away the service. So I think that's that's something to look for because. If that's if that's something that consumers are you know even open to, eventually we're going to see fast food joints you know convert to that, and I think that's good. Hey, um, wait, wait, wait a second. I have a question. If uh, because I love that idea of the thing is it's expensive. It's yeah, really expensive. It's like a hundred and seventy dollars a week. At the well, yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah. If At you the, order, it depends. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, so number one, in, Mexi- in Mexico, we don't have that shit. Yeah, we don't have that shit. <laughs> but if, even if we did, I would, the other day I was thinking, I, and I think I told you about it, that I thought about it, but immediately I had like five or six other ideas why it wouldn't work. So, yeah. <laughs> but well, first, it's expensive. Eating healthier is expensive, which to me, is, is it doesn't make sense at all because it's less expensive over time to... Uh, get a lettuce than order a, a, a hamburger yeah in, a hamburger in reality i mean so why is a salad like seven dollars and a combo like five dollars yeah that, that's another reason why yeah. i think it's it's you know and 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 i think that with something that's also interesting is you know if it goes back to the point is why don't we just learn to make our own food <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm not yeah. saying cook it, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, what you know, put your own farm outside or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know a guy. He's uh, older than us. He's probably uh, 60, 58, something like that. He has he has money. I mean, that guy's not starving at all. He has money, but he has his own uh, greenhouse on his, his in his in his house. Yeah, he has That's his own cool. greenhouse, and he's like really devoted to it. He has like a, um like a system for the pesticide and all that stuff because hey. He he gets um, insect problems for certain certain things, and the idea behind this, or or why he created it, is because he hates going out to the grocery store and buying buying things. So he was like, I wanted to create a place where I could go outside, pick the things I want, and I have a salad. So he has everything that's cool that you need to create a salad, like in his salad. It, it, it's a it's a maybe like a. 
one meter by two meters mm -hmm. big or maybe two meters by three meters big it's not that big it's, it's you can barely fit three people in there but it, it, it i mean a guy with money is doing that he mm -hmm. can spend all the money in the world buying groceries but he's not i want my salad the freshest it can be mm -hmm. and he just goes out to buy once a month uh, whatever he needs from the store and that's good i mean that's and that's I'm, i'm pretty sure he values it more than simply going and just you know buying food that's already made <laughs> because he has to you know put the time into it <laughs> oh and, and he has it all set up that he can just grab it and eat it he doesn't need to wash it cool <laughs> and he showed me he was like you, you you know you can grab this and eat it and i'm like really yeah and he grabbed something he put it in my face and i'm like <laughs> should i really eat it yeah come on eat it it's clean it's whatever and i'm like um And he saw me like thinking about it and he just put it in his mouth and he said, see, grab it, grab some and, and eat it. And I'm like, okay. And I tried it, but I tried, um, arugula. It, said, uh, it was arugula or something like mm -hmm. that. It's really, it was really like a bitter. Yeah. It's really bitter. So it's supposed, it's infused with, um, radish. radish. Yeah. It was infused with that, but it's really good. Interesting. So yeah, I'm, I'm all for growing our own things. If it was up to me, I would probably like sectionize a city where each section or zone or whatever has its own like little farm where people of that sector or section can go and exchange mm -hmm. whatever for, for food, for yeah. fresh, 100% fresh food. And you, and I mean, that practically eliminates the need for big trucks to cross the country with foods and everything yeah. like that. I mean, I think that's better for us as a human race than yeah. was. And it, and it takes us back to the, you know, to the, to how we used to do it, which is basically people grew their own food. <laughs> yeah. Which is, you know, educational and, and makes you value it more, you know, because there's, there's this, um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's stupid, you know, I think that's, that's another idea I should die, but basically it's people, um, so there's, there's this thing, you know, and I don't have the, the data with me, but it's basically a huge problem that we have is with the people don't eat food that looks or that doesn't look nice, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like fruit, like, uh, like vegetables that look like, like, you know, even though you can eat them, they don't look nice. People will throw them away or yeah, no, no, it's stupid, did right? Did you hear about the, the thing that they do at the supermarkets? Yeah. That they have like a really, the food needs to be like an eight out of 10. And yeah. Yeah. Out. Yeah, they, and don't they throw it away. It. Yeah, don't throw it. They'll throw it away. Don't receive it. Yeah, they throw. They actually throw it away, dude. They yeah, throw it away, it. and they can't. They have like this contract that they can't give it away to, to a shelter or to homes to do all this stuff because they might get sued. Looks, yeah, <laughs> they might. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so they waste a ton, a ton, a ton, of, a food. ton of food, and there's a lot of people going hungry in the world, and yeah. these guys are just just. Fuckers. It's, it's going back to money. It's all about money. And if it's all about, I mean, money's not a bad thing. But when it, everything becomes about it, that's when it's a bad thing. I mean, no one's going to sue you because you're giving them food and they don't have any treat. And if they do sue you, I mean, this, they don't have money to go to court. So don't worry about it. Just help people out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge problem. Um, Yo, okay, so what, what other idea should die? Okay, so we just killed fast food, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what other well, idea? The, we, we, re, we reframed fast food. <laughs> yeah, we reframed it. Fast salads. Cheap. Because <laughs> it doesn't... It remind me, reminds me of a joke from... Uh, it was Malcolm in the Middle. And it's the dad, which we all know as Walter White, And he was like, one of his sons, like, hey, hey, easy on the orange juice. That stuff doesn't grow on trees. Wait a minute. It does grow on, street, on trees. Why is it so damn expensive? It, it, yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> why? If it does grow on trees, I mean, it's free. That's why I, why I tell everyone. We could plant a lot of things and they're free. We don't have to pay for them. And they're fresher and they're right on our backyard. I, I don't know why someone wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. And I've, I've I've heard about communities that people do that. For example, one one uh, house has avocado trees, and they're like they give avocados. Yeah, they're, they're sharing it. Yeah, they share, they share it with, share. The, with, yeah. with the whole block or with the whole community, and everyone has different things, and and they share. And, and yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing. Why are we funding that? Yeah. Why, why are we doing that? 
Yeah. Um, you know, another idea that I think should die is the career ladder. The career ladder. <laughs> I think it's stupid. That idea um, should die from our heads, from our minds. Um, and, it, and it is going to die. Um, I mean, you'll still see, see strands of it because that's just the way people are. People like to be told what to do. I mean, some, they're, yeah. They're just, they're just wired that way. But um, the fact of the matter is, and we touched upon this in the, in the previous podcast, is that uh, um, you know, people are fed up with the way work is, 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 is structured or how basically their work life is structured. And what I mean by that is that you're just going for a paycheck. <laughs> um, you're supposed to climb a ladder, but yeah. that ladder is... Uh... And, 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 oh, and by the way, the people clinging to the ladder are boomers and much, much older people who came from that era. Yeah. It's not even the people of our age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I think that's... Uh, and and this, this also goes to... Um, you know, to the way people are taught in schools, which is basically get a diploma and you will get a job, <laughs> which is a, you know, stupid idea. It's not true. You won't get a job. Well, yeah, it is true. You will get a job. You won't get a job in what you study, but you will. Yeah, you'll be working retail or answering the phone, on customer service and all this stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, you're not studying for that. <laughs> You're an Australian architect. Anybody can do that shit. For that. Yeah, <laughs> you actually don't need a diploma to to get a job. Or maybe you do. I'm not sure. But um, a friend of mine told me that they don't care if you're if you have a diploma or not, if you went to university or not, you'll get paid the same as a guy who didn't go to university. It's, it's basically here in Mexico. It's all about if you speak English or not. Yeah, that's it. You speak English. I mean, a lot of people in the world don't speak two languages. And we do, especially because we're on the, on the border, but we're not worth anything. I mean, we speak two languages and we're not, we're yeah, worth like $400 a month. You're a commodity. I mean, that's stupid. We speak two languages and we're, we, uh, and they pay us, well, not, well, yeah, they pay them um, 7,000 pesos, which is uh, for 48 hour work for, um, is that like a four hundred dollars a month? Four hundred fifty dollars yeah. around, yeah. So that's if you know English, that's uh, about how much you're worth here. I know some other places that if you know English and Spanish, I mean, and just, you cross the border and you work as a translator in the states, and you you're worth way more for that mm -hmm. if you're a translator. But if you work at a, oh, they, they actually don't have that that sort of thing over there. They, if you know Spanish and you work the the telephone, you're worth more. Just are gonna learn English, yeah. but I mean that's that's stupid. That's really stupid. Yeah, I mean the 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 reason behind the career ladder is that you will you know get paid more. I mean, security. security, security, get paid more and authority. Um, all ideas are going out the out the window. Uh, <laughs> mm. They're going out the window. Um, but hey, there's some people who, who are happy like that. So yeah, they're, they could they're like, like they like they're happy being slaves, basically. <laughs> yeah. Maybe what we're trying to say is, if someone tries to teach you about that, about the latter, and you have questions, question it, question it, and think about it. Don't don't be like, oh, that's the only. That's thing what I have, I have to do. do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If if you're happy with it, if you think, hey, that's a great idea, then do it. But if if you have just the slightest doubt. When that maybe that's not for you, then question it. Question it and dig deeper and don't be afraid because eventually the world's going to change and all that's going to change. So what your parents did to make money and to make a living, that's probably like 10% uh, oh, what's gonna stay? valid right now. It's not yeah. not the same at all. You were telling me about that 40, no, 54 million Americans are, are freelancers. freelancers. Yeah, and that, and that's in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, imagine in India, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, China or, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, like this. Um, I think I mean it's, I think it's related to this topic, but uh, you know, Finland is is adopting a new economic structure, so they're gonna they're gonna pilot this yeah, basically yeah. where they're gonna give a salary to every every citizen. It's not a, it's not a lot. It's like you know in dollars it's almost 900 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. 
but um, basically they're trying to number one you know get people money and number number two is that they are trying to to prepare themselves for an eventual you know for the way work is going to change because <laughs> they're anticipating this they're anticipating that you know, the technology is going to take over most jobs. Aren't they also doing the, the thing that every rent is going to be the same or something like that? I think so, yeah. Yeah, they're trying to do that, right? Like, everyone's going to have a house and everyone's going to pay the same rent. And yeah. everyone's. And I, I I saw it on a video on my Facebook. Weird, but... um, And I, I, I read it. I read all the things, but I, it didn't mention what you were saying about everyone's, like, having... A... Yeah, even people who don't need the money... I mean, who, who, who have some, some kind of, uh, you know, some type, some wealth into them, uh, even them, they are going to get the money, which I don't think is reasonable, but, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be equal to everybody. But that's what they're, that's where they're going to do. And not, they're not the only ones. I've heard another co country, I think it was Sweden, who will probably adopt the same thing. Um, but see, that's, that's going on. <laughs> that, that's going to kill many, many ideas. If it works, if it works, do I think it's going to work? I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, <laughs> as it as it is, I don't think it's going to stay. But I think it it has to do a lot with the mentality. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, is it Finland or Iceland? I think it's Finland. They have the the the, the best school the best system, school system in the world. In the world. Yeah. So I think it it's will equality. work. It's about equality. It will work for them. Because, yeah, for them, that's where I was heading. Because if, I think if you grab either an American or a Mexican and you start giving them money or yeah. an allowance and the rent is the same, they're going to start blowing it on, on... In Mexico, I'm pretty Stupid sure it's going to be booze shit. and party. Yeah, and rims. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's racist, too. <laughs> and, and in the States, they're going to be blowing it on, on, on booze and party in Mexico. And porn. Or But, no, on, on guns. <laughs> And on guns, guns. yeah, and guns. <laughs> and on fast food. So uh, I, I think it's going to work for certain people, not not for, I mean, it's all about cu culture and mindset yeah. and all that stuff. But No, I mean, if you bring that right now to Mexico, it's, it's chaos. Total fucking, no one's going to want to work. No, conformity to the fucking end degree. <laughs> I'm, I'm awesome with my, probably it's going to be like a... Because people like, already, I mean, people... Already make maybe 900 bucks a month, and they're in Mexico. No, come on, dude. <laughs> 9,000 pesos, maybe. 9,000 pesos, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's barely enough. In Mexico, you make barely enough to, to survive. You, you live literally paycheck to paycheck, and I yeah. think that's like the big problem in Mexico that you do or you take a lot of decisions based on I need the money to survive because yeah. I don't have money saved up. And hey, if you don't, you, if you can save money. Then what happens? You need to take out a loan for a car. You need to take out uh, insurance, a health insurance, which over here it's stupidly like three hundred dollars for a whole family a month. That's it's crazy, and um, it's and and all that it's going to be either on credit or uh, you you dig a hole so big that you will never ever 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 get out. And that I think that's the point of our systems. The American one, I think it's the same, but Mexico's. Yeah. Mexico, if you get a credit card in Mexico, it's the starting interest rate is like 28% or 32%. Yeah. The starting interest rate. They don't care if you have credit history or not. It's not 100% implemented here that way. But, I mean, in, in the States, I think if you're starting out, it's like 19, right? Yeah. So it's, it's almost 10% or more than 10%, and it's just... I don't know. It's 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 a friend of mine told me it's the same system, but ours is Mexican one is more fucked up than, than yeah. the American one. So that, that and also we well maybe this is another idea that might die. We just read it on on a on a medium uh, post. Uh, consumerism, excessive consumerism. That we don't need a lot of shit. No, they no, kill us. And I was gonna say that as the next idea, but I was gonna frame it differently. I was gonna say. An idea that must die is ownership, because oh. that's what drives consumerism. <laughs> ownership. Yeah. It's a need to own shit. The need to own the latest thing. The latest shit or, or whatever. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, I know that Apple does it on purpose, and, and I, I have a, a iPhone 5, I think it's a 5, or I, I have no idea which one it is. I think it's a 5. 
And I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I don't think I need to upgrade to the 6S, is it right now? 6S Plus or whatever. I don't, it's, I think it's a lot of money for a phone. But uh, they, if, the other day I wanted to download a game and I couldn't because it wasn't compatible with my phone. So what do I need to do? I need to buy a new one to play that game. But so, so I think they do make it on purpose, like, hey, you need to upgrade. But, but my phone is still working perfectly, perfectly. And, and it's fast, and I have no problem with the app. I have no problems at all. But now my only problem is one that created by Apple. So I think, uh, and I, I don't know if I read this or someone told me about this, but in the 50s, cars were made to last and now they're not. They're they're made to last like five years. Your credit, six years. How and, much you're paying a month? <laughs> yeah. So that's another thing. If you, that's why a lot of people still like, oh, I, I want to buy a 1950s something yep. car and and build it back up and whatever, restore it, because that's gonna last years and years and years and years yep. because they were made to last. Yeah. Were built to last. But now not anymore because people. And I was reading that thanks to uh, Apple Pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, spending increased and will increase uh, till 2019. It's gonna there's gonna be a big boom on, on spending because uh, we're like the generation of spenders. Yep. We need to spend. We we have like our our, our jobs and some get decent uh, freelancing jobs and, and they spend 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 spend. And now with Apple Pay, in the th- first three weeks that Apple Pay was introduced, there was a 50 percent increase in sales. For people who accept it, yeah. So, I think we we just want to spend, spend to be happy. Well, I mean, people have been pre pre preconditioned to spend, and it, and the easier you make it to when eat. when did that start? Because it started a long time ago. But uh, but uh, you know, one yeah. one of one of the key factors was credit. Oh when credit it. was created, that made it easier simply because you can delay payment. <laughs> um, I mean that's that's one of the biggest ones. Then the came the marketing machine, um, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, oh, and and here's another reason why ownership should 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 die, um, and I think it's gonna die. So eventually. So so, so sharing resources. Um, how many? I mean seriously, how many? I, I I read this I read this the other day, but. Basically, like for, for, for wrenches and for stuff that you usually use maybe once or twice a year, right? Stuff like your toolbox stuff in your house. Um, you just have them in there. Yeah. Um, when you only use them maybe once or twice, <laughs> why don't you just share with somebody, your neighbor or something? <laughs> I mean, because if everyone... your neighborhood has a handyman, really, do you need to have the same shit he does? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm all cool with learning of, you know, you know, fixing your own shit. Mm-hmm. But if it's just about mindless consumerism, really, it should just be fucking free. Yeah, we got <laughs> And also, oh, yeah, well, of course, Father's Day. What do you get your father on Father's Day? It's a fucking Day? toolbox. I mean, no, he already has one. But hey, there's this new one is, and it's on sale and has more things. Oh, oh well, shit. It's going to have two now. You oh, never, you've all, you only used it twice. <laughs> we got a new one. Yeah, I have <laughs> one. Ridiculous. And, I have a toolbox that I bought like six, seven years ago. I don't even remember, remember what it was for. I think it was for a friend of mine was helping me or teaching me how to change the battery in my car. And we bought one because we needed one. And the good thing is now that I'm a dad, I use it more often for stuff. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> sometimes I think maybe I should just like start doing household projects or building stuff yeah i mean if you if you really if you really sit down to use it and you know make a list of all the shit that you really need it's gonna be very short (laughs) and you're not gonna like it yeah you're gonna think fuck that's all i need really it's gonna be very very revealing most of the shit you don't need it (laughs) the shit you're just buying to fill up your house or your apartment or whatever yeah i mean it's true there's a there's a book called stuffocation I read it. I read it in the weekend there, or the or the few days that we spent, you know, filming your movie. Oh yeah. I read that that in those kind of two days, but basically it talks about the need to consume, and how if you really make a list of stuff, <laughs> it's gonna be very short. All the other shit, you know, throw it out the window. 
I mean, think about it. Why do you need a big house? Most people are not having multiple kids anymore. And hell, we're not even having kids anymore. You have one kid. I don't. Just one. Yeah. She's six years old. That, yeah. that I mean, in a few, a few years ago, on our parents' generation, having one kid. was ridiculous. Yeah, it was like at you're, least two. It was like you're being cheap. <laughs> yeah, it was at least two. And my daughter's now six, and we haven't had another one. And, and it's, 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 it's because we don't want to. <laughs> Because, I, first of all, yeah, they're expensive, but, yeah, yeah, a lot of people aren't having them. Maybe it's, it's true. It's, it's expensive. It's changing. I mean, yeah. when my, when, for my, my dad's family, he has eight, eight, eight sisters, or he had, because he, he passed away. But my grandparents had a big house, so I spent my time there. It's a big house. And I have a lot of fucking you know, cousins and whatnot, so we spent a bunch of time in there. But today... That's like old school. <laughs> you don't have that. You know, I, I would think, and that's, that's when, when, I, when I was, you know, growing up, I thought, well, why have a big house? And I remember that. I said, oh, so that's why you should have a big house. Because big if family. you have a big family, you got somewhere to, to hang around your family, right? Mm -hmm. But no, most people just have a big house just to say, oh, I got a big ass house. Well, I, I got mean, a fucking golf course and whatever. <laughs> I got a theater in there and shit, right? <laughs> I don't it's, know, maybe, it's all right, but. Maybe it's the space. I don't have a lot of space. Like in that movie, uh, Step Up. Look at all this space for all the activities. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, know. you know what I mean? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's a stupid idea. I, I, I would be happy. I, I'm even like very interested in the small house, the, the new yeah. small house. Like you create. The tiny house. The yeah, tiny house, they, the you, tiny house you, trend. You, yeah, I, I love it. I don't know why. I just love it because I, they feel like cozy. And I mean, I'm a tall guy. Maybe it wouldn't work for me like that. Maybe just a little bit bigger. But, but just because I'm a tall guy now. Not because of, I want a, a bigger house, but I, I think that's a, a like a great way to go. And but uh, I read about a couple who did that. They created a small house for them. They were like happy, and they don't pay. Um, well, I don't remember homeowners or something like that. They don't pay because it's not legally a house. No. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know how the government's gonna react to all that. that ha and also, kind of small houses have a smaller ecological footprint yeah there i mean there's a lot of benefits to you know not going have you, have you seen all that? out <laughs> have you seen that new pot it's a pot that runs on on electrical power mm, yeah solar power yeah, there's a lot of them and it, uh no it's only one right now it's a it's a well, pot it's a pot that you can buy and they'll deliver it to you and it's just a pot oh that's insane <laughs> that, yeah it's insane but everything works it's basically a house not i don't know it, it's Smaller in this room. It's a small room. It's it, 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 like it has everything. It's a small windmill. And <laughs> That's cool. It's really cool. And when it rains, it gathers the rain. The, the rain. You can drink it and purify it. And I mean, it, it, they thought about everything. And I think I think it's like three thousand dollars, something like that, or five thousand dollars. I don't remember. But it's really cool. And I think it's more expensive to have it shipped over here than, yeah. than anything else. But it's also the chipping in the container houses. I love what they're doing with, with that stuff too. You know, one, really one cool. thing that would, 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 you know, in terms of, uh, you know, smaller houses as uh, the pet, con the pet, the idea of having pets. So that's also one of the reasons you would have a, a much larger house than a smaller house because of the pets. With a larger house, you are going to be very limited with a pet. You're going to have to live with them inside your house. <laughs> but a lot of people who have pets, they actually like sleep with their pets. And well, yeah, I mean that's also changing. Pet and ownership and in itself is also changing. Yeah, yeah. You know, pets and in this I, case, dogs are being treated more as humans now. I read an ar article that said that sleeping with animals is what it was a uh, help you sleep better. I don't know why, but it said that. And the more that sleep in your bed, the better, apparently. But I mean, a, a long time ago, I used to. To fall asleep with with one of my cats, and I don't know. It's, it's just cool having him there, just sleeping, and then he would wake me up, and it's, it's like an alarm clock for free. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> um, all right. So, what what other ideas should die? What other ideas? Um, well, there's this kind of trend that I was. Um, that I noticed about filmmaking that one of the things I told you when I was going to make my movies, 
I'm gonna make it with almost no money. So that's like a like a hook or whatever. But I'm starting to see that a lot of people are making films without any money, and some are, are turning out decent. So pretty much, it's it's now I think it's either a, or you have money to make a film, or you have no money to make a film. So I think that I, the idea that must die here is you need a lot of money to make a film because if you think that you'll never make a film because the one hundred thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars movies they won't exist anymore because people won't wait to get the money to make a film yeah why should they and if and if you don't get on well, that panel there's, I mean, there's more access to resources yeah most and you, stuff you can already get i mean you don't I mean, you don't need a Pinewood Studios to make a movie, no. seriously, or one of these, you know, audio rooms or whatever. I mean, I mean, the format of making movies will will change because you don't have access to all that shit. Exactly, it's gonna change. That's why VOD is like because you have to create around that. You gotta be creative. Yeah. It does, if you have the the technological know how, it works for you when you make the movie by yourself, but. If you're like, oh, I want this camera, oh, I want this lens, oh, I want them. Mm. either work and buy them or, or but yeah, getting a, like a large, large budget's not gonna be possible anymore unless yeah. you're like big times. But I don't know, man. That's another idea. I think it's and also in the like in the tech world, some people are just like gonna start creating stuff. I read about two guys separately that are creating really cool stuff and they're just learning from YouTube. And getting the parts, one guy used uh, created a, an electronic arm that he controlled with a glove, mm. and it was made by Legos and like PVC piping and black tape. Yeah, that was his first uh, prototype. I mean, he obviously didn't get any money from investors or anything. Like he just did that thing. And right now that he has a three man company and they're doing one that's like really kick ass. See, and that I think that's that takes me to the what I think is another idea I should die is the idea of degrees. <laughs> yeah. Um, career majors and all this crap, um, because like those guys and mm, other people, um, you know, you don't wait to get a degree to start doing shit, <laughs> or for somebody to validate your supposed knowledge in terms of your degree. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's stupid. Yeah. Because um, it's you know we're talking about kids. Right? Yeah, 17 year olds. You're talking about fucking kids. Yeah. We're talking about guys who are, in, you know, just about, you know, about to pop out university. And we're talking about fucking <laughs> yeah. kids just getting into university. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? And they're learning from YouTube. And uh, I mean, I think it's, it's cool if you have like an old school mentor. Like if you start working on a company that does robotics or something, like that, you have an old school mentor. But you could get your education while you go and on your house, on YouTube or on whatever, lynda.com or whatever. And that could also like speed things up. You don't have to wait till you're 24, 25 no. to start working. You can start working at 18 if you want to. Yeah. Because obviously those guys are, are starting working right now on their own dime, their own house. Maybe their, their parents are helping them out, which is, uh, I think that's the case. But... They're doing incredible stuff. Like, it's amazing stuff. The other kid is doing a gun that only fires if it recognizes your, your fingerprint, which is that's something straight out from a science fiction movie. Yeah. Just straight. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. When I, when I saw that, it was amazing. I mean, he was a 17-year-old kid. And when, when I saw both of those videos, my, before they explained how they did it, I, I, I was thinking... No, those kids know what they're doing. They're like, whatever, they're, they're into technology, they're whatever. And both of them said, before I started this project, I didn't know anything. Yeah. Everything I learned it from YouTube. And I was like, oh, oh there goes your excuse now. What's well, your next excuse? And see, that's the thing, because, I mean, we, we mentioned the career ladder and the degrees, which basically... If you connect them both, they are pretty much associated with your experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? So that's the big idea that should be eliminated. The, 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 the value of experience. Because these kids, they have a fucking experience. People making shit out of, the, you know, using videos and whatnot. I mean, just off knowledge that they're picking up from the web or whatever. 
And we've done this before also. I mean, yeah. we don't wait around to, to tell somebody to tell us, oh, you, you, got, you don't got an experience. You can't do that shit. Right? What? What? <laughs> We we sure can. I mean, you, you don't have to. I mean, to... people tell. I, in my case, they, they tell me that you shouldn't be making movies. You need to be working with someone who already made well, movies ridiculous. so you can learn. Blah 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 blah. We're like, I, I don't want to do that. I won't, I don't want to work for. And everyone's like, you should get a job at assistant assistant director. I'm like, if you knew anything about the yeah. industry, you'd know that assistant director doesn't have to do anything with directing. It's yeah. just you're just helping out the director with scheduling and shit like that. And so. But yeah, people told me, but I saw this interview from a, uh, a director and he said, do a movie. Y your first film, you will never get more experience or learn more than when you do your first film. So do your first, first film. And that was like a, something really important to me. That's what made me go and do my first film because that's where I, I yeah. got the experience. And right now I have... A ton of experience compared to about a year ago when yeah. before I, I first I filmed the movie, so and I didn't go to school for that. I, no. I just did it and learned the hard way. But now I know no one's gonna take that away from, away from me, and I can do another one better. Yeah, when I was um, doing and this is a long time ago, over a decade ago, I was doing te basically tech consulting, and I started doing tech consulting while I was still in university. Um, <laughs> I already had like like 15 clients um, in San Diego going to university in, in Tijuana, right? With no degree, <laughs> with nothing, basically. Just somebody that likes to solve problems, basically. That's that's how he knew me. And after that, I decided to, um, to not frame myself or call myself an IT consultant. I decided to say, you know what, I'm really in the in the business of you know, a better, which to me, you know, implied innovation. So that was the first time that I started using the, the term innovation in terms of my type of advisory. And I remember a friend who came, you know, who, who was like, you know, I, I couldn't do that because I can't, I can't, I couldn't sell something that I really don't do. And I said, well, that's because you haven't figured it out. <laughs> you don't have, you don't need to have a degree to do this. <laughs> You need to have the fucking, the fucking, you know, the, 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 the attitude to want to change things, to make them better. And it doesn't matter, you know, from what angle you come from it. it what matters if, is that you see something and you figure out how to, how to do it, right? So that's what I've been doing for a long time. That's why I figured it out because that was essentially what I was been doing. I started in technology, but, you know, in the projects that I was involved in, It wasn't just about technology. It was about a bunch of other shit. <laughs> so I kind of, I kind of come, came to that conclusion. What I'm really doing is not just tech. It's, it's, it's a bunch of other stuff. So I started using that. But I didn't need a degree to do that. <laughs> Nobody had fucking told me. None of my clients ever questioned me about, you know, my background. It was just, this guy just does this shit. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> they, just, they, just, they just got it, right? And... and You know, it's 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 ridiculous, but um, you know, it doesn't work for everybody because people are just you know, fear, have the fear that they need validation to, <laughs> to do something right. Unfortunately, yeah. but the world the, the world doesn't really work that way. If you want to hack it, um, what what other ideas must die? What other so ideas? far so so far we talked about fast food, career ladder. Um, ownership, the degree. What else? We can't. We can't come up with just four. <laughs> well, I, I really hate banks, so maybe. Well, the fucking banks. Well, banks. The, I mean, banks are, are hand by hand with the credit. So that's... Pe pe you know, there's a good quote from Bill Gates, and because I, I worked on a, on a banking project about a year ago. Basically, it's people need banking, but they don't need banks. Yeah. You don't need the bullshit of a fucking bank. Yeah. <laughs> we need to save money. We need to know how can we invest our money. Uh, we need to know those type of things. Or, or, you know, stuff like, you know, payments and whatever. But we don't really need a bank to do that. <laughs> Which is, I, I had a problem with, um, uh, I used to do banking on Wells Fargo. And I mean, they're all the same, but... Um, 
if you have money with them, it's like, oh, yes, it's a dream, it's a dream, yes, 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 yes. But when you start not having money, when you start uh, doing the overdraft charges thing and all that stuff, their tone changes. And I mean, I had so much problem with them because I, I told them, you know what? I don't want the overdraft protection. Okay, Super Dream, it's done. You will not have overdraft protection. If there's no money in the account, it won't go through. And I'm like, yes, perfect. So I was really surprised when a few days later they told me that I I had overdraft protection again. Mm. And when I called them, they were like, oh, no, no, no. If there's no money in the bank, it won't go through. But if, if it's a... Uh, what was it? A, a pre-scheduled payment? It will go through. I'm like, mm -hmm. you didn't tell me that when I asked you. I told you, if there's no money, nothing will go through, right? Yeah, exactly. Nothing will go through. So, after that, after all my problems with Will Fargo and Chase or Bank of... I don't remember. I, I, they're all the same. And I started looking for a, for a place where I could have money and have a, a debit card. And I could spend it online or whatever. And uh, I found Simple and Moven, which oh, yeah. are, which are yeah. uh, I like Simple better, way better. But still, Moven is enough for me to do whatever I want. But I mean, banks act like we need them, but they need us. They're actually yeah. investing and in moving our money around. Yep. So the idea that they have all of these rules and and sort of like elitism to them. Uh, it, it just boggles my mind how we're like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, bank, you take away my money, then take away my money. Yeah, 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 okay, so I'm sorry because there wasn't enough money. So, yeah, I owe you $35 more because you lend me that money. I mean, there's a lot of stories about people who like went to buy a cup of coffee and <laughs> there wasn't money and they, they bought like a $35 cup yeah. of coffee. And I mean, this is just ridiculous i don't think we don't need bank that, that should die we they need us and we're the ones suffering for it <laughs> one time i was talking to a representative of wells fargo and i told them i think i pay i pay you guys more in overdraft charges than i pay the irs and he was like i'm sorry sir <laughs> but it was the truth <laughs> i spend a lot on on, on on because they also create the 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 your account if you purchase something it doesn't show up until two, three days later. Two, three days later, yeah. Yeah, so you still have the money there, and it's a, it's a little bit hard to keep your finances in check when it doesn't get represented there. But, for example, Simple and Moven do that. At the moment you swipe the card, it deducts it from your, your app or your mm -hmm. account. It's still there, but you know it's not there. So you can take you can make decisions for, for with your money. And they also don't do the. It's now a commercial for a simple home. <laughs> and they actually don't don't have the overdraft uh, fees because if there's no money, it's not going through. That's it. That, that's there's no other way around. So yeah, I think something like simple and moving is we actually don't need it, but it will make our lives easier. Well, see the the thing why it's interesting is because it's an interface, but banks banks are not an interface. They are the pretty much like the back end of of simple. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why Simple was eventually bought out. Because it was not going to replace a bank. It was just simply a better interface for, for you know, for the user. Um, <laughs> and it's what everyone wants. Yeah. No, no they don't want to deal fees, with the fucking bank. Yeah. No, no, no actual, like, overdraft fees. No, I mean, it's, it's you don't spend anything extra with, with that. You don't, yeah. it's just, you use, you put money in. You use it, that's it. Yeah. Nothing more to it. No, we want to open a savings account. You want to open it. You want to add this. Do you want to add that? It's only $2 a month. You get protection from blah, blah, blah. No, it's not all that stuff. So I think that <laughs> banks should die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
good storytelling is good advertising, but the most of the shit we see is just um, it's not, it doesn't even get to the point of storytelling. It's just it's just hey, buy me, buy me. You need me, buy it's me. Crappy, it's crappy, crappy ads basically. Yeah, that's why Apple sells so much because they do like uh, this great videos. They do great videos for their products. It's like, yeah. It's well wow. thought out. Yeah, exactly. It's not crap. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Not crap. Um, but yeah, that was another idea. Another idea I was thinking is, um, and this is an old idea, but um, how uh, you know, cashless society. So <laughs> the idea of money as a currency, and we talked oh, about yeah. this in, a, in another podcast. I think we talked. Yeah. We said, no, not. I don't think we did say. We said, you know, what if, what if. What if authenticity was a currency? <laughs> that would turn up everything upside down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, <laughs> I mean, but that that goes like uh, back to what we were saying. That I mean, if if there's a farmer in your community, you could go and exchange some sort of services with them. And if there's a handyman, I mean, it's the same. If, if you you're good at something, you can exchange that for for food or for other services or stuff like that and you know there's no need for the money and yeah you can have a good life doing it that way yeah i would like to uh, try that out or test it or i don't know but yeah i, I think it's gonna be a, a less stressful well maybe if you're a guy that doesn't know a guy or a girl that doesn't know how to do anything yeah then that's when prostitution goes into play <laughs> You know, one an idea that should die also, I think, is the, um, well, no, we, I can't say that one, because we have this whole climate thing going on, and one of the main proponents or main, you know, I don't know, attackers of climate is is, is uh, travel, so air travel. But I was gonna say that, when I, and the cool idea that should die is we pay for travel. Because, I mean, if you really think about it, most airlines are in the fucking red. They're subsidized. So why even have that? Let's just make them free. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, seriously. And, you know, because when you think about happiness, um, and, and we were talking about this, you know, a few minutes ago, is, is people favor crap. And that supposedly makes you happy in the short term. Exactly. But what makes you really happy is paying for experiences. And what gets you, gets you to experiences is travel. You know, going to different places, opening your mind, all this shit. So why don't we make it? Why don't we make travel free? But see, we can't because then, not at this point because the planes are big contaminators. <laughs> you know, we need we need we need to change the fuel the the fuel to to something else, which they're already thinking about. But uh, I think that's that's a crazy idea. It's never going to happen. <laughs> but it would be really cool. I mean, why we didn't have to go to travel. We just decided, hey, let's go fucking somewhere, and everybody. <laughs> that, uh, I'm pretty sure that why why don't they try it for like one or two months? See if yeah. I think tourism will skyrocket. Like you guys have no. A lot idea. of people will be fucking happy. <laughs> yeah, people will be happy, and tourism and all over the world is gonna go crazy. It's gonna go crazy. Yeah, they're gonna be like three hundred percent increase in sales. One company, like one company, I think would try it for one day at least a minimum, because then the whole month is, is a lot. I think it's Volaris here locally in Mexico. Volaris, you know, Volaris does crazy shit. Yeah, they do crazy. Stuff. They even even ver it's like version, but not yeah. not too extreme. Yeah. But they're 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 probably the most uh, forward thinking airline in Mexico. They're, they're, I mean, they put I mean they put get goddamn names on their planes, right? <laughs> I didn't know that. They yeah. do. They used to they used to do that as a promotion and say, oh, you're you are arriving to your location to buy this plane's name or whatever and they used to play around with that a long time ago when they started doing it it was like it was it created a lot of a lot of word of mouth people thought it's funny <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know they're gonna put a face on the plane but um yeah that's i think that's an idea that should die you know travel you gotta pay for travel i mean i mean <laughs> i think it's ridiculous yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah. i mean if you i mean if, we're, if we can't make education free at least make the other one, the, the one that makes you more and more wide open, which is travel, free. <laughs> yeah, but education should be free too. Yeah, I know. And travel. I know, yeah, it should be fucking free. Yes. Just, maybe they could um, have a, some sort of contract or with the government of each place or whatever. I don't, I don't know if, 
each country that I mean there or maybe the government pays for your yeah. travel because I mean I'm 100% sure that tourism is gonna go like way up like a lot to all the most uh, to all the the, the most um, popular places yeah why not you're, you're saving like I don't know, a thousand dollars on plane ticket or five hundred dollars on plane. You're gonna go spend that on the other on your vacation. Yeah. You're not gonna be like, oh no, I'm coming back with five hundred. No, you're gonna go spend it over there. You're gonna it's it's a, like a mindset. You're you're saving money, so you're gonna spend it and have a better time. Yeah. You know, another idea I should I think it should die is taxes. Not because I'm I'm greedy like that, but more like it's stupid. I mean, seriously, how much stress do, do people get when they're gonna make your taxes? Is ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I think it, it should be. I mean, I'm not saying how it should be. <laughs> I mean, taxes should exist as a, as we provide money to the country. That type of idea, but the way we have to go about that sucks for people because it's a huge stress. Oh, there's a there's a John Oliver segment on IRS. And it's like. It's ridiculous. It's underfunded. The IRS is underfunded. Ridiculous. It's, it's, yeah. They have so much work, and it's, it's that's why it creates all the chaos because it's like very, very, very. We don't need. See, I, I read this. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, two days ago, where there's this huge amount of people who help, who have a job during tax season because of all the crap that happens. The people just going insane with their taxes. Uh, filling the text and all this stuff. I mean, do we really need that? <laughs> we don't need it. I mean, that's money that maybe somebody, you know, the government should should get or something. I don't know. But it's just it's just insane. I think it's, it's just, a, you know, a huge, huge headache. <laughs> the other day I was thinking about... Oh, you got to remember to fill out your fucking taxes or whatnot. All this shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it's it should be like it's a stupid w- idea. Way easier, way easier. <laughs> because yeah, it's when tax system tax season comes, it's like oh, I gotta do my taxes. Blah, 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 everyone stresses out. It should be that easier, yeah. way easier. Um. Okay. What else? <laughs> what other ideas? What? I think we're almost done with this, but uh, what other can, can we can we, we we could probably do a part two next week. Yeah, we can squeeze in there. Um, you want to do a part two? I want to do a part two. All right, let's do a part two then. Yeah, yeah, because we came up with this idea today, so we didn't yeah. have a lot of time to think oh, about fuck it. Fuck it. Okay, yeah. let's do a part two. We'll we'll we'll, we'll close this down as it is. We'll, yeah. we'll follow up with the uh, part two next week <laughs> with crazier ones. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's what I'll do. But uh, in the meantime, if you listen to this one, you know, send us some comments. Tell us what ideas you think we should 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 you know, completely die, and, uh, you know, we'll follow up next week with some more ideas. Yeah, hopefully yours. Yep, so let's do that. See you, see you next week, guys. Bye.